What's going on there, Baby Dragon Squad? I have a video breakdown for you guys today on the new Link V Reigns pack Link Monsters. I know a lot of people talked about them this past week. I'm finally getting around to doing it just because there's there's been a lot of stuff going on. Quick thing, I want to let you guys know if you guys weren't already aware of this, I am going to be at YCS Dallas this weekend. I'm going to be there Friday through Monday, so if you guys want to stop by, say what's up, play, chill, whatever, let me know. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do so. Uh, hopefully I don't dilute my time, but we're going to get into this. Uh, this is going to be the new Link Variants pack. There's only a few cards that actually interest me out of this. I know a lot of people always love legacy support, and I believe there's about six cards that uh, that are actually in this pack that are considered legacy support. There's a Cliff Fort monster, a Gladiator Beast monster, a Burning Abyss monster, a Lightsworn monster, a Heratic monster, and I forget what this bottom last one is. I believe it is a... It is a, give me a second, it's a Krishtron monster. So, out of all of these, of course, the ones that interest me the most are definitely going to be the Gladiator Beast one and the Cliff Fort one. And then probably in second place, the Heratic one. I was never really a Heratic fan, but I, I really, like, after that kind of, like, phased out, I, I really was kind of interested in the engine. Uh, Tefno, it's still a pretty cool card. It's obviously, like, being able to Cyber Dragon and stuff. So, we're going to talk about each of these cards, and uh, I guess I guess we'll go into it. So, first and foremost, we're going to start off with the Cliff Fort one which is the top left one right here. Uh, it is a Link 2, and it's an Earth Machine Link monster. 1800 attack, pretty standard for Cliff Forts. Uh, and it's Links, all, all of them have, you know, enablers, so they, they all point uh, down and uh, diagonally down left and diagonally down right, which is really cool. They're all kind of the same in that regard. And they're all uh, Link 2 monsters, except the Lightsworn monsters. So that's basically a, a little bit of a, a similarity between all of them. But what the Cliff Fort one actually allows you to do is it says it, it requires two machine monsters, which is actually really cool. You don't actually need Cliff Fort monsters for this, so you could use Cyber Dragon, you could use uh, Card Trooper, you could use, you know, whatever else. I'm just giving you guys examples of other non Cliff Fort machine monsters, but you guys predominantly are going to be using this in a Cliff Fort deck. But what's cool is you don't have to necessarily use it in a Cliff Fort deck. So uh, it's basically just a generic uh, machine or, or a machine type uh, link monster, which is really cool. And it says this link summon monster is unaffected by spell slash traps and activated effects of other link monsters, which is really cool. It's a little bit more resilient than most Cliff Fort monsters. Most of the time they're only affected or unaffected, excuse me, by monsters with a level or rank lower than them. So uh, that's kind of important. So this guy's a lot more resilient because he's also unaffected by spells and traps. And then in addition to this, he also says that once per turn you can target another face-up card you control and one face-up card your opponent controls, negate both of their effects until the end of this turn, which is a really cool effect. It's almost like a, uh, a scrap dragon effect, except instead of destroying the cards, it effect failures both cards in a way, which is really interesting. And what this actually allows you to do is you can actually not only negate your opponent's cards, but if you have a Cliff Fort monster on your field, uh, whether you normal summoned it or if you tribute summoned it, you'll be able, especially if you normaled it, it'll, it'll, it's attack will go down, like, let's say if you summon a Helix or a Carrier or even a Stealth or any along those uh, lines, any of those big monsters, their attack will go down to 18. But once that happens, if you use this card on and you gate it and negate it, it'll have the same actual effect as you activating something like Skill Drain, which means your monster will get its back, uh, get back to its original attack value, which is really, really cool. And then since, you know, that monster is negated even during the end phase, once this effect wears off, because that monster no longer remembers that, its attack will still remain the same. So if you summon a stealth, you know, normal summon it without tributing, it'll go down to 1800. And then if you use this card on it, it'll go back to 2800. And then during the end phase, even though this card's effect uh, no longer applies, during the following turn, your monster, your stealth will be at 2800 attack, which is really, really cool. This is a very versatile effect. And then its other effect is when two monsters are special summoned to the zones this card points to at the same time, you can add a level four. Uh, you can add one level five or higher machine monster from your deck to your hand, which is really cool. I'm sure there's going to be other applications for this other than Cliff Forts. Um, predominantly in Cliff Forts, you'll if you have monsters in your hand and you have this uh, already on the field in your extra monster zone, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to pendulum summon something like a carrier or helix from your hand to those respective zones, and then this guy will activate, which allows you to search something like a disc or a stealth, and then you can just tribute those monsters that you brought out. So this card's really, really cool. Uh, Cliff Fort Genius, it's a really interesting card. I really enjoy the artwork of this as well. It looks like a scout has the shadow figure coming out of it. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the monster itself or it's supposed to be uh, the Cliff Fort Scout that's like dead here. I, I don't know. It's a really interesting artwork, but I really like this card a lot. I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, the next one is the Gladiator Beast Monster, which I also really like the artwork on it. I like the whole crimson aspect to it. It almost looks like uh, Gladiator Beasts meet Breaker the Magical Warrior in some ways, 
which is a 2000 Link 2 monster. And he basically allows you to use two Glider Beast monsters, so it's kind of like a contact fusion, except uh, they go to the graveyard instead of going back into the deck. And then what it allows you to do is if a Glider Beast monster you control attacks, it can't be destroyed by battle, and your opponent can't activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. So it's almost like a Wabaku slash, uh, slash Armades for Gladiator Beast that's built into this monster. And then at the end of the battle phase, if it actually battled, you can actually tag this guy out into the extra deck and summon two GB monsters with different names from your deck. So it's kind of interesting that they made it so that the GB, monster have, ha, GB monsters have to have different names. You don't have to do that with Geyseris or you know any of the other guys that you use, but you do have to do it with this guy. And it's kind of interesting where this is basically the first non uh non fusion taggable gb monster that we have it's a link monster that can tag in and out the same as fusions so for all intents and purposes this may as well just be exactly like a, a fusion monster except it actually enables you to have a, a, an arrow pointing diagonally left and diagonally down right so that allows you to basically bring out more of the guys such as tamer editor and uh and a de and a de whatever the other guys the other guy the, the guy that's not as good as tamer editor <laughs> you guys know what i'm talking about so gladiator beast drag dragasis dragasius i'm not sure it's a really cool name but uh the card artwork looks fantastic i really enjoy it i really like these two monsters uh i'm kind of just going to briefly go over the next three cards because personally i know i know some of you guys like these cards i don't really like uh burning abyss and i definitely don't really like light swarms i don't really like either of these decks but I guess I'll go over them quick, real quickly for you guys. The Burning Abyss guy, he allows you to, uh, he's actually called uh, Chirubini Black Angel of the Burning Abyss. He allows you to use two level three monsters, so it's generic in that regard. Uh, monsters this card points to can't be destroyed by card effects. If this card on the field will be destroyed by battle card effects, you can send a card you control to the grave instead. So that kind of enables some of your monsters effects if you ever need them to. You're also able to send a level three monster from your deck to the grave. And then you can target a Burning Abyss monster you control and increase that target's attack and defense by the attack equal and defense equal to that monster that you just sent so uh it's basically almost like a uh, it's like a foolish burial built in with protection so i guess that's kind of cool for the deck uh, it doesn't really interest me i don't really like burning abyss in general uh the light swarm monster is kind of interesting because this is the only one that actually requires three monsters to make and it's a little bit more powerful because it also actually points up kind of like decode talker the arrows are the same as decode as decode talker it's 2400 beat stick and he actually is called, or she is actually called, uh, Curios Dominion of the Lightsworn. And she requires three monsters with the same attribute but different types. So basically, you just use light monsters, uh, but they have to be different types. So you could use like Warrior, Spellcaster, and you know something else. So you guys could use different stuff there. But in terms of her, she says that if it's Link Summon, you can send a card from your deck to the graveyard, which is really cool. It's a built-in Foolish Burial. I don't know why they're really interested in these Foolish Burial effects, but... Uh, in addition to that, if a card or card is sent from the deck to the grave by a card effect, you can send the top three cards of your deck to the grave, which is pretty absurd. That's, that's basically like a free Minerva effect in a lot of ways, and like three more free mill cards, I guess. And then if this face-up card leaves the field or your opponent's card or effect, uh, or, or destroyed by battle, you can target a card in your grave, add it to your hand. And the fact that says you can target a card in your graveyard makes this card pretty good. I think this card's actually pretty absurd. Um, I'm not sure. I could actually see this card seeing play in a lot of other decks in the future because it's not really restricted to light swarms. I mean, I could definitely see a deck in the future that runs different types of monsters but also has the same attributes and then is able to use this effect. So this card is actually, uh, this card transcends light swarm in a lot of ways. It's not just for light swarms. Obviously right now that's what it's intended for, but it's something you may want to keep your eyes peeled on. Um, I definitely would probably pick up like a copy of this card maybe just in case. Um, even if you're not playing any lights or invariants. Next is the Christron monster. It's called Christron Needle Fiber. Uh, 1500 attack. It requires two monsters, including one plus tuners, which is kind of odd. But he allows you, if it's Link Summon, you can target, you can special summon a level three or lower tuner monster from your hand or deck and face up defense. And it can activate its effects this turn, the monster you bring out. So that's kind of a little bit of a handicap, but not a big deal for Christrons because you can usually just use them to synchro, which is the predominant focus of the deck. And then finally, during your opponent's main phase or battle phase, you're able to use this quick effect, which you can actually banish this card as a cost, and then you special summon a tuner synchro monster from your extra deck, and that special summon is treated as a synchro summon. So that's kind of cool, another enabler for Christrons. They never really took off. I think they're a really interesting budget, fun, combo-based deck. Um, I never had the opportunity to fully build the deck just because I never got all the cards, but I think this is a pretty cool deck. I'm sure you guys will see this in some fun deck profiles. Uh, if anyone has, you know, if ever anyone's ever interested in building this deck uh, in real life and wants to send me a deck profile, I'd be more than happy to post it. Or if you guys see me at an event, I'll gladly give you a deck profile uh, when this card comes out. And then finally, the last card I'm actually interested in is Heretic Seal of the Celestial Spheres. 
This is the Heratic Monster, which is really cool. It actually, like, I really enjoy the artwork on this. I'm a huge sucker for space and astronomy, and uh, I, I really enjoy this. It's, it's like a really cool space-looking monster. It's just like almost like different planets and all the different Heratic uh, logos and seals on there. It's really cool. It has zero attack, which doesn't really matter, but its effect is actually really interesting. So what it allows you to do is, first and foremost, you have to use two Dragon Monsters, which... Uh, I know this is you, it requires dragon monsters, but in, in any deck, since Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of thematic in a lot of ways, any deck that uses dragons, this is basically a <laughs> even if it's not you know integral to their theme, this is effectively a generic card for dragons. So uh, it doesn't require like a specific name; it just requires the type being dragons, which is really important. And it says once per turn during your opponent's turn, if it's in your extra monster zone, you're able to use this as a quick effect, which you can actually tribute a monster you control or in your hand, and you return a face-up card on the field to the hand. So that's actually really cool. Uh, you can actually enable a lot of your cliff or not cliff ward, excuse me, your heretic monsters effects, which allow you to summon the vanilla monster out of your deck. And then if you actually tribute him, you can special summon a dragon monster from your hand or deck and make its attack and defense zero, which is another enabler for this deck because you can tribute this for any of your heretic guys and get another monster out of it. So uh, you can bring out, you know, a tomb a lot easier. You can bring out a lot of the other guys a lot easier with this card. I think this card has a lot of potential. I'm not sure how decent Heretics are right now. They were definitely an extra deck based deck. This obviously points down uh, diagonally again, left and right. So it's kind of an interesting enabler. Having zero stats is kind of subpar if your opponent's able to stop this uh, or keep it on the board with some kind of effect negation. Uh, but other than that, um, the, the, the releases are really cool. I really enjoy legacy support. Again, my favorite ones are the Cliff Fort, the Gladiator Beast, and probably the Heretic Monster. And then probably after that, I'll definitely pick up the Lightsworn Monster just in case. I don't like Lightsworns, but I think it could definitely transcend the deck. And then maybe the Christron Monster and Burning Abyss Monster, kind of like my least favorites, just because uh, I've never I've never really been too interested in those decks, especially Burning Abyss. I've really never liked that deck as a whole, um, at least at the mechanical level of what it does for the game. So. Um, along with Lightsworns, obviously, I, I don't like the mill mechanic, but uh, it's an important mechanic nonetheless. So those are the cards. Let me know which one is your favorite and which is your least favorite down below in the comments section. Hope you guys enjoyed this recap. I will link it down below. This is courtesy of YGO Organization. Uh, again, Cliff Wards, Gladiator Beast, Burning Abyss, Lightsworns, Christrons, and Heratics all receiving legacy support in this pack. We're not actually certain when we're going to be getting this in the OCG. This is actually being called the Link Reigns Pack or V-Reigns Pack. Uh, with Link Monsters, so it's really cool. This is going to have four previously declared themes. I'm not sure if they're planning on releasing any other monsters or any other cards. I know some people have been talking about maybe getting potentially X Saber support or any other kind of legacy support out there. That'd be kind of cool, I guess. I I'm not too uh, fond of having an extensive amount of legacy support simply because I feel it kind of just dilutes a lot of those archetypes and themes. If you look at stuff like Blackwings, we've, I feel like almost every pack or every other core set, we get like five new Blackwing cards and they never do anything. It's just because people enjoy those themes so much. So it's cool for fans of those themes, but I feel it'd be nice to actually get something much more practical and something that makes those decks a little, at least a little bit more competitive, um, just in my personal opinion. But we'll have to see if Konami decides to release more stuff. I'm very excited for the stuff. So uh, huge props to Konami for actually releasing all these legacy cards. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another awesome video. Thank you guys for supporting the Baby Dragon Squad. And make sure you guys are enabling that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date with my latest videos. I'll probably be live streaming later today if I get the opportunity to do so. As well as tomorrow, I need to live stream tomorrow. So tomorrow's going to be my last day here uh, before I go to YCS Dallas because I am going to be leaving early Friday morning, flying out from California. So that's going to be a very interesting trip. I hope to see you guys at YCS Dallas. Make sure you guys are a patron on my Patreon if you guys want to help the channel grow. It means a lot to me. YouTube's really making it difficult out here for content creators to make any kind of revenue to reinvest back into our channels. And I know for me personally, uh, I wasn't able to raise enough money for Dallas. So I had to sell a lot of personal stuff, which means I'm taking a huge L going to Dallas. You guys helped me raise a little bit of money, but... At the end of the day, uh, I really wanna, I really wanna be able to go to events more frequently for you guys to get coverage as well as meet you guys. And it kind of sucks that I'm unable to do that. So um, I don't know if this Dallas event is gonna be like a one-time thing in the coming months. Hopefully, I can go to San Diego as well. But uh, it'd mean a lot to me if you guys continue to support the channel because this is something I really enjoy. I love making content for you guys. And uh, I'll see you guys. Take it easy, Baby Dragon Squad. I love you all. Thank you so very much. And that is your favorite time wizard signing off with another video duelist, more legacy support coming in in the coming months, hopefully. And uh, that's basically it. Take it easy, duelist, and I'll see you guys at Dallas. And always remember, guys, to believe in the heart of the cards. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another awesome video, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my live stream. Take it easy, duelist.